Welcome back everybody. This video we're going to be talking about how to iterate through an array. There's two good purposes for this. One, if you need to work with each value of the array individually, and two, if you need to fill an array one value at a time. So hopefully you guys are excited. I'm super excited. But you know what really gets me excited? You betcha. Pramp is a free mock interview platform where you can develop your technical interviewing skills. Practice coding with live execution of all major programming languages to solve real interview questions. Interview types include data structures and algorithms, product management, behavioral interviews, system design, front end, and data science. I've personally used this service to successfully crash course for a software engineering interview. Lots of people are having success getting positions at companies like Amazon, Google, Twitter, and more. Check it out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so let's first start with an array of let's say size 10. So what we'll do is we'll just say new int and then inside the square brackets, we'll just say 10. So that's how many elements there are. And then a for loop might look something like this. I also, if you guys didn't see the for loop tutorial, if you need more experience with that, you can go check that out earlier on in this series. So we'll say int i assign it the value zero. And then we'll say i less than 10 and then i plus plus. This will give us 10 iterations and the i will actually line up with the index value. So it's really nice and easy. So all we gotta do is say grades index i, oh, not nine, i. That is going to reference each position in the array, each iteration. And what we'll do is we'll just assign it the value five. And then at the end, we're going to output the value of the array. So we'll just say sys out arrays dot two string and we'll pass in grades run this see what happens you see we get an array of 10 fives if we took this line of code and ran it up here check this out you can see we just get a bunch of zeros so we went through each iteration and gave it the value five so we can actually get this value from user input if you would like so that might look like this let me get rid of this line here and we can say scanner call it something equals new scanner hover over that and import scanner I think it's java.util, hopefully. All right, so there is the import. And then for right here, all we have to do is say system.in. And then inside this for loop, we can create a variable. We'll just call it x. And we'll get this from input by saying input.nextint. So this is going to get the next integer in input and assign it to this variable here. Then what we can do is we can take this value and we can assign it to the value of the array. All right, let's try it. Let's see if it works. Run this, it's asking for input. Let's just put some stuff in here, put in some values and look at that. It fills the array with what we typed in. So that is pretty awesome. Another thing you can do is you can also use scanner input to determine the size of the array. So if you wanna see that in action, watch this. We'll take this scanner and we'll put it above the, the array declaration and we'll create a variable, we'll just call it size, and we'll get it from input.nextint. And then we'll put in the size variable right here. So when we run this, it's actually going to be asking us for the size, we'll just say three, and oh, there's actually a bug in this code right here, because this for loop goes up to 10 every single time. So instead of typing that in there, we should have used a constant to declare the size everywhere and, and then just have the value in one spot or you should reference this variable here, which is what we'll do. So we'll change that to size and we'll rerun this program. So now we can determine the size three. Now we should get three iterations of the loop. So we'll go with five, 10 and 15. And look, that's what the array is filled